what about the jobs that are potentially being or could potentially be created in the U.S.? The reason the Canadians did the Green Energy Act is just looking at the economic numbers. It makes incredible sense to put money behind photovoltaics. The Pembina Institute, which is a nonprofit group in Canada, did a very clever study where they said, well, what happens if you take a million dollars and you invest it in an energy industry? How many jobs do you get? In uh, oil, and natural gas, or oil and gas, you get one and a half jobs. So think about what that means. If you take a million dollars and put it in the bank at 5% interest, that's 50 grand, which you could pay one and a half people to play cards, uh, and you get the same amount of uh, employment. Coal mining is a little bit better, it's 4.4, but photovoltaic systems were 17 jobs. And the reason is we don't have, you can't have a highly automated installation industry because you're going to be putting modules up on a whole bunch of different houses that has to be done by actual people until like, you know, the robots are built to do that, but we're, we're, we just don't have that yet. And so that means tons and tons of jobs. Now, one of the first things I did when I got to Canada was do a study for the Ontario government to look at the economic viability of bringing in these major plants. And so what they, what they wanted to know is if we bought, if we encouraged the building of a gigawatt size thin film photovoltaic plant, how many jobs would we get and how much money would we make off of it? And so we looked at a whole big bunch of different scenarios. We started off with the absolute most radical one, which is the Ontario government buys a gigawatt power plant and then gives it away to somebody and just tells them to run. Um, to the little bit less radical of paying some of the construction costs, uh, to partially subsidize the construction, uh, have a publicly owned plant, have a loan guarantee for the construction, or are they not radical at all, just give them a little bit of an income tax holiday to encourage, you know, say the Koreans to come in and build plants. And uh, then we looked at the revenue that you would be generated from having this plant operational. So you have taxes on the personal, corporate, and sales. You have taxes on the sales of the modules inside of Ontario. And then you have the su saved health costs. And we mentioned this earlier. In the U.S., we don't bother to calculate this. But in Canada, because they have socialized health care, it's the government that pays these health costs. So when the coal plants create pollution that makes people sick, they pay for it. And they know exactly how much they're paying, and they don't want to pay that. So that actually goes into their, their cost calculations. And so the, the bottom line, we have this big messy graph with all these different kind of whacked out scenarios, is that even in the most crazy scenario where you buy a plant using government money and have a lottery and just give it to somebody to say, here, here's a you know, couple hundred million dollar plant, please just run it for me. Even that gives the government an 8% return on investment. They didn't do that. What they did is they said, we're going to pay a little bit more for the electricity in order to get all of these companies to, to come in. And they had a Ontario um, standard for the amount of stuff that had to be made in Ontario in order to be uh, eligible for the speed tariff. And that's sort of what that, that weasel word at the end of uh, Proposition 3 is trying to get at. Where you make the most money is if you do, do the actual manufacturing in your state. Um, you could certainly make a lot of money and create a lot of jobs just installing all the stuff and bringing them in from China or uh, Korea or wherever. But where you make the, the serious bill is uh, make, doing the manufacturing yourself. And so this gives you a feel for it. So this is uh, the number of jobs, the direct jobs and indirect jobs, uh, created by creating a, a single PV production plant. And so you're basically kind of to build one in year one, and then this is the amount of production, because remember you're putting a new gigawatt out into the world each year, and the, the amount of solar cells that would produce the number of jobs, and it's, it's substantial. So just doing a single plant uh, gets you 130,000 jobs, uh, say by 2025. If we compare coal jobs to solar jobs, we already actually look pretty good. So coal employs roughly 80,000 people in the U.S. To put in a million solar energy systems, we need 70,000 people working, and today we already have more solar energy workers in the United States than we have coal workers. And I would argue, and many people can maybe argue with me, uh, I think our jobs are better. Um, you, know, you get to be outside, <laughs> it's not pleasant, uh, it's dirty, you don't have enough bad lungs, all that kind of stuff. Um, now, PV costs are dropping. This is kind of the historical trend. And this small little blip right here is where the chemical industry forgot to give us more silicon. And so we, you know, we're growing by 30%, 50% every year. And the chemical industry thought, how can that possibly continue to happen? and they didn't bother kind of ramping up their production. So we got this little blip in the solar cost where the price of silicon suddenly went up. Uh, but since then, they've corrected that. And so now we're actually underneath this line here. Um, we're off the chart of the historical trend. Um, part of that is due to the, the cheating that the Chinese are doing. Uh, but you, you have modules being produced at around that same rate in the United States, in Malaysia, in Germany, in Korea. So it's, it's not just the Chinese. Once you've gotten to the scale of manufacturing, after you've gotten to that gigawatt scale, it doesn't matter what kind of solar panel you can make, 
you're producing it for well under a dollar. And if you use the thin film stuff, you can certainly produce it for well under, say, 50 cents. Um, the second graph is maybe the most important one. Uh, I just published a paper last summer that showed that the levelized cost of electricity for photovoltaics was low enough to be better than the grid cost of electricity in many places in the United States. So as of last summer, we were already there. Now, that number, that, that kind of meeting meet grid parity is it's a moving target. You have prices going up and down, you have tax situations changing, you have a uh, trade war with China suddenly making it very, almost impossible to get modules in the U.S. for a few months. Uh, but overall, the trend is very clear. The system prices are dropping. Uh, we are already in this region where some residential and commercial rates we can beat, depending on your exact location. And in the very near future, we are going to be down in the, like we can compete with any way that you can, can produce electricity.